It's about this man that we learn is his name is William Tell, and uh, he's gotten out of prison, and in prison he learned how to count cards, and he's chosen the profession of gambling uh, to be his life, and it's very low stakes, and uh, he just does enough to get by. Uh, you, know, you, you start to learn about him as the movie progresses, and you kind of have an idea of who he is. Uh, he's mysterious or something strange about his routines, um, and slowly you start to realize what he is, what he's done. And he's someone that has chosen to be in a state of limbo. Uh, he's chosen this profession um, of, of low-stakes poker, low-stakes uh, blackjack. And he's in this kind of circular pattern uh, as a form of penance because he's done something that you learn is really bad and it's, it's caused him, others, but, mo you know, but, uh, but mostly him, I guess if you can say that now, he's what he's done is something really terrible and it's caused um, a large amount of trauma and um, he's traumatized by what he's done uh, and so the um, I guess the legal ramifications of what he's done it's not enough for him he doesn't feel like he's been punished enough so he chooses a life that's pretty desolate and repetitive um, and that's where we find them. Ty's character is the one that kind of, yeah, breaks open everything for him because of what he represents and who he is. And, and um, I think he, William Tell sees an opportunity to, to try to help, to try to save somebody from the path that he was on. He's suddenly afforded a, an opportunity to re-engage with the world through Kirk, uh, a character that Ty shares and plays, and through, uh, mostly through Melinda that Tiffany Ange plays and her vibrancy and her vitality and her life. And so he reluctantly kind of gets drawn into this um, strange little family. And, um, and I think you start to see him shedding some of these things and thinking that maybe he has a chance here. Maybe he has, he can redeem himself in some way and that can lead to an opening. Uh, and so he concocts this, this plan to help this kid out. Uh, and, and I think he thinks he really has an opportunity to perhaps forgive himself and be forgiven. And he wrote to me and said, uh, Oscar, I've written a script um, for you and I'd love to hear what you think and let's, let's see if we can do this. And so uh, he sent it over and I read it and I didn't understand it because it's so mysterious and so uh, it was riveting and strange and, and um, um, just kind of confounding and I remember reading it the second time and it started to reveal itself some more and the third time and what's incredible about his his writing it reminds me a lot of Harold Pinter or some of these great kind of uh, mysterious writers that it doesn't just reveal itself um, you know it doesn't explain itself you really have to engage with the material you have to um, uh, recognize that he's written space uh, for thought and for subtext and for subconscious and, and things that maybe don't seem like they make sense uh, because they don't in a logical way, but you realize the human mind doesn't always work logically and particularly this character. So I, I, I really fell in love with it, and especially talking to him about um, his concept with this. And he talked about this as another in a series of um, a man alone in his room movies that he does. So, um, so yeah, I, uh, I got very excited and, and, and dove right in. It was kind of breathtaking to see him move around a set and say what he wanted and you know be so confident and sure about exactly where he wanted the camera exactly what he needed and um you know he's also very direct and very uh, very clear sometimes uh you know for very sensitive people it can be a bit uh, disarming but i think that you realize you get an appreciation for the fact that there's just no bullshit you know he's he doesn't have time for that he just you know, he's going to be very clear and direct with what he wants and what he thinks is not working. But when something is working, he says, that's terrific. That's exactly right. And, um, you know, that first day it meant a lot to me when he came up and said, I think that you got this guy. You know, I think you know who he is. Tiffany Addish, she's like, she's what I imagined Jesus was. She's the kind of person where you can imagine people like quitting their jobs and leaving their families, just following her to be around her because of the amount of life that she sheds and gives out to everybody. And, I just found her to be so warm and 
um, so vital, and I think she's fantastic in the role. You know, you bring such a warmth to this character who could really come across as just like someone that you don't want to be around, but you, uh, there's something heartbreaking about him. He's such a, a sweet guy and a really great actor and um, fantastic energy. So it was, it was, um, it was, it was really nice to do those scenes with them because um, you know they're quite at odds these two guys, but there is this weird father son dynamic that happens. Um, I'm so grateful that I had a chance to to embody one of his characters, specifically this one. It's, uh, such a, a unique construction that he's made. He 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 really takes it to the line because you think, okay, well, what's so bad? What could this person have done? And when you find out, it's pretty bad. It's pretty awful. And um, and then, so he puts that challenge, uh, and, and then he explores, well, how does this person end up deserving any kind of empathy? I think the thing with Paul's movies is that they there is so much depth in them, and yet they're constructed in such a way where they don't tell you what to feel, they don't tell you what you're supposed to think or what you're supposed to feel, and um, I, just, I just hope that people feel that there's some truth in it. Hi guys, here's today's daily fact. The Star Wars saga is known for its special effects, but many famous sounds were actually made from an odd mix of noises, such as the lightsaber noise from TV hums, Chewbacca's voice from a mix of bears, walruses and various dying animals, oh and also Ewoks speak Tibetan and Nepalese. Remember to click below to subscribe or on the side for more great content.